It's 3.15, and that means it's time for... The Real Deal with Bill McNeil. That's right. Welcome once again to The Real Deal with Bill McNeil. I'm your host, Bill McNeil, and you're probably wondering exactly what is The Real Deal today. Hey, good question. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, and I am looking so fresh and so clean. If you didn't know, <laughs> barber shops are outlawed where I live in the Philippines. And me and my, my sons, my, my younger son looked like a Manchichi. I look like a hobo. And finally, we got a barber to visit the house, and I got a nice clean haircut, so I'm feeling good. I'm feeling fresh today. We got some Marvel Comics news, and this is a huge comic book week. There is so many comics to read and review this week. But we're going to hit the news first. And obviously with me is the Poobah Comics himself. Perch, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for, thanks for having me on. Well, I'm glad you could make it. We got some uh, information about the future of Immortal Hulk, the, the, the future of Young Guns, the, the program for Marvel for up-and-coming artists. We got a little bit of talk about Miss Marvel as well. And just another little thing at the end that just kind of chaps my ass that I want to get your opinion on as well. Before we get into all those details, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs down if you don't. Let us know why you're a couple of knuckleheads, if that's what you think. All right, Perch, so we got to get to this. Obviously, Immortal Hulk really reestablished Hulk as a big player within Marvel Comics. Obviously, he'd still been with the Avengers, but the Hulk line itself, it, it kind of gone stagnant. It hadn't been a really a great a Hulk run in a long time. Al Ewing, not my favorite writer, but I think he really got the horror vibe really dug in like into some deep cuts on, on Hulk lore along with Joe Bennett. Joe Bennett gets so underrated. The art absolutely uh, breathed life into this comic series, but it's ending at issue 50 in the not too distant future. And they're not going to continue the series or reboot it. They're just going to do one shots with new creative teams. I find this strange. Yeah, I think they're testing the waters a little bit for, for what comes next. I think this is a case where Marvel gets to the end of a run and rather than immediately reboot it, which also some fans have complained about, they, you know, they're trying something a little different and they have sold one shots for Hulk pretty successfully. And the ones they've done, they've got good numbers on the, the immortal She-Hulk and the other experiments they've tried. And so I think this is a case where they'll, they'll definitely reboot. There will be a Hulk ongoing again at some point. Uh, but maybe, you know, it's going to be six to nine months before we see that. But I think Marvel's testing the water to say, hey, uh, you know, when a series ends, what do we do? Why don't we just try and kind of have a, a different uh, cool down approach? Maybe this is Marvel dipping their toe in the water of, of what some people have suggested of just doing more OGNs and one shots rather than any ongoing series. <laughs> maybe it's Marvel just wanting to have a million number ones come out. I, I have no idea. But uh, it is. Uh, I, I think this is an experiment, and I, I'm. I understand why they're doing it. I also think it will have diminishing returns, and I don't think it will ultimately be successful. Personally, I agree with you. And I, I do think it has a lot to do with them wanting number ones. It, it feels like yeah. the the attraction of the number one for speculators, collectors, is, is really where they make a lot of their their money, a lot of coin. Now, this could be really successful if it's like Peter David coming back on, or maybe seeing. What Donny Cates, you know, thoughts on a Immortal Hulk one shot, or maybe some of these cool creators, maybe somebody coming in from the outside. But if it ends up going down to like the Marvel B and C tier writers, you know, mm -hmm. Matthew Rosenberg's Mortal Hulk, I, I, I don't say that uh, strategy yeah. being successful in the long haul. Yeah, I, I don't either. And and the fact that they haven't really announced any names, I think. Uh, um, Kudar is the only uh, artist that they've kind of vaguely said is is connected to this. Um, but, I, I, you know, I, I just, like I said, I, I think they're trying to see if they can really get one shots to go. I don't think they have necessarily a plan for a new Hulk series of what they want to do. I think uh, one of the things about Al Ewing's run is it did take the Hulk in such a different direction that some new creator coming on, I mean, like, what are you going to do with Hulk? What's the next pitch? And And they may not you know, they may not have found that pitch. I, I think it would be hard to kind of get to it. So, you know, it's an interesting experiment. I, I guess we'll see it. I, I, I wish, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I wish they could just not, not reboot and just, you know, have Immortal Hulk number 51 and keep going and have some of these different creators like, like they've done in the past. But that's old man thinking. So what do I know? Well, it is interesting. 
Probably not the worst strategy in the world to get a little distance between Al Ewing's Immortal Hulk with Joe Bennett in the next creator. The expectations will be very high. The, the bar has been, the standard has been set high, very high for the Immortal Hulk series. Obviously, it, you know, it's, it's been a big hit. I, I absolutely love the flavor. The art on this was, was amazing. So um, we shall see what the future is. Obviously, the immediate future after Immortal Hulk 50 is going to be one shot. But we'll see what the uh, the long-term future for the character holds. Now, getting into this next story, and I find this one even more confusing. So Marvel always, every year, they have their young guns. And they've had a lot of great artists. I think their last uh, classy young guns might have had, like, Pepe the Raz, Marco Cicchetto, mm -hmm. uh, Russell Dowderman. Creators that are on some of their bigger books and, and more impressive titles and, and some, some standout artists. But it appears that they're dropping the young guns. I guess, I guess they're not scouring the market for the newest, hot, or, you know, up and coming talent. And they're they've got the store breakers, the next generation of elite artists. But it's crazy. Like if you look at this name of eight artists, six of them are already elite artists. Like these are already character or writer or artists on really big books. Carmen Carnero, R.B. Silva, Natasha Bustos, Patrick Gleason, Ivan Coelho, Peach Momoko. Uh, Joshua Casera and Juan Cabal, like R.B. Silva, House of X, Powers of Ten. Well, he was on Powers of Ten, and mm -hmm. whenever he's on an X Men title, I get excited. Patrick Gleason, uh, yeah. <laughs> Superman, and he's also doing Spider Man. Ivan Coelho's actually been doing some great stuff on um, on Venom. Maybe he's not really fully established yet. Peach Momoko is one of the most in demand cover artists in the industry. Joshua Casera is absolutely destroying it on X Force, and Juan Cabal. Had the most dope page of art in all of uh, what was it? The um, giant size X Men tribute. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Natasha Bustos has been doing uh, Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur for five years. I, I mean, that was, that was a while ago. I mean, there's there's a lot of so the the Young Guns program has always been a little confusing to me because the even you know back in in 2018, which is the last time they did it. Um, the majority of, of young gun artists that they put on were were established on books. Uh, I mean, they they actually were already there with the company, and then it it kind of I, I don't know if this was ever the the firm answer or not, but it seemed like these are the people that are getting exclusive contracts with Marvel, but they don't necessarily step forward and say these people are getting exclusive contracts uh, in the in the release. But that is true with these eight, and I think that was true with the young gun programs in the past. Uh, it, people often remember there was a brief period in I think 2010 or 2011 where Marvel did the architects where they had you know the the writers that were going to you know be the new up-and-coming writers and they had people like Matt Fraction and Brian Michael Bendis um, <laughs> well past when he was established at any rate you can all yeah lots of lots of thoughts on that but uh, you know all these I think that the story here is you've got eight artists uh, they are all like Marvel exclusive now Peach Momoko is going to be a pretty big blow i think to a lot of different companies as you mentioned huge cover artist in demand now marvel exclusive and uh, won't be doing all those from what for what we're hearing um many times the marvel exclusive contracts are really just kind of dc and and doing some image work but this 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 exclusive contract supposedly is you know pretty across the industry so you will only see their work in marvel uh if true but yeah i mean i i don't get the name change of Stormbreakers. like i i, I didn't think young are they like I thought I thought Thor. Are these the new Thor artists? Yeah, exactly. I, I <laughs> they reference you know wanting to pay tribute to Beta Ray Bill, but why? I mean, I, I like Beta Ray Bill, but what what does that have to do with anything? Um, I, I didn't like Young Guns either. I always thought that was a weird kind of name, but but Stormbreakers they did manage to find worse. So you know, there you go. I, I, I this is what I'm saying, CB Sabolsky. If this is the new elite talent at, at uh. At Marvel Comics, don't sing it, bring it. Put R.B. Silva as the permanent artist of X-Men. Patrick Gleason needs to be the permanent artist on Spider-Man, not just the fill-in here and there. I know yeah. he's doing three issues after 850. Ivan Coelho, is he gonna be the 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 the, the next artist on Venom? I, I imagine Stegman's gonna be leaving soon. Obviously, Joshua Casera is already on X-Force, but is Peach Momoko just gonna be an exclusive Marvel cover artist? Screw that, put her on an, a major title. If, you, if these are the big artists, put them on the biggest titles and let the titles explode. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I, can't, I can't agree more. I, I, I hate this. Uh, you get these top talents in. I mean, R.B. Silva's flagged to be the new artist for Fantastic Four. Cool. 
Um, I, I would be shocked if that run goes any longer than six issues. And even there would be a, a miracle to get to six. And and I hate that. I, I mean, you got these top artists, put them on books. As, you know, credit goes to Natasha Bustos, who actually stuck with Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur for the majority of that run. That's, that's I think, the only artist on here that had that length of run. But it's it's a... I hate that practice on Marvel. I, I absolutely hate it. I, I just want to see creative teams kind of stick with the title and, and get an epic run going with them. I mean, we used to have, you know, I mean, hell, the, the Mark Bagley Bendis Ultimate Spider-Man run went on for, for uh, forever together with that team. And we won't, we, you never see anything like that anymore. And it, it drives me nuts. Uh, the, the other part to this is, uh, you know, four out of the eight are all from, are all, uh, from Spain. So... Well, right, way to represent Spain. I mean, there you go. Absolutely. I, you know, I'm, there's a lot of international artists, obviously, on the comic scene. But, you know, I want to see these these artists. I think, hey, if these are who you're flagging as your as your next elite artist, I agree. Almost every one of these is an elite comic book artist. Stop wasting them on the first three issues of whatever comic that you want to be hot and then moving them to something else. Stop the bait and switch and let's make some epic comic runs. That's all I'm saying. I totally agree, and and Peach Moko needs to do interiors. I, I, I the covers are great, but you know hiring. I, you want to sell Captain Marvel? Peach Momoko on, on the interiors and actually get a competent artist or writer. You need both those things, yes. <laughs> so that's my thoughts on that one. Now like moving it. over to the next subject. Now I don't know. This one's kind of news. It feels like Miss Marvel has been earmarked as the next big thing for Marvel Comics. Maybe just Marvel. Period. We know she's been finally cast. I think she's going to have her own uh, Disney Plus series. We've heard that she will be uh, appearing in the MCU in Phase Four. Uh, you know, are they pushing Captain Marvel to the side? Have they kind of figured out that that maybe that's a failed experiment, and they're kind of pushing the chips all behind Miss Marvel at the time? We obviously know she was obviously heavily featured in the latest. I think it was the Avengers um, video game as well. Yeah, the, I mean, the Avengers video game was really a Miss Marvel video game. I mean, it, 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 you're playing a lot of Miss Marvel. I mean, yeah, I think I think Marvel would really like her to be the new. I, I mean, th I, this this headline is is wrong to me. I think it's it's more Marvel would like uh, Miss Marvel. Too many Marvels there to be the next Spider Man. That's that's really what they want to do. They want to have her be the the Teen street level. superhero that all the kids relate to and come in and buy. Exactly. That's that's what they're after. Um, I I think the the comic. I mean, again, we've talked about this before. I think that when the comic launched at its very, very beginning, it had a bit of that flavor to it. And I think fans were responding to it, at least on a small level. It, it didn't have the takeoff appeal of a Spider-Man, but it was it was getting there. I think the character then, like Marvel tends to do, and, and this is what will sabotage her, is they push way too far, way too fast, and they immediately try and shoehorn the character into everything, and they wind up killing the interest. And I think you saw a lot of that with Miss Marvel. I mean, a couple of years into it, they've got her leading the Avengers, and then she's in the Champions, and she's guest starring in books. And it's like I've seen Spider Man tell Miss Marvel he looks up to her. Yeah, exactly. And and in dialogue like that, it's just that turns off fans. I think they'll get another uh, shot at it with the show. The casting, um, whether you like the character or not, the casting is is good casting. I think it's going to bring that kind of more kid charm to it. And I think Disney. When they're when they're in that zone, they tend to do well. They they know how to deliver kind of TV shows, media for that audience, that age group, um, fairly successfully. So it's it's. I, I think the trick will be: can they then integrate that into the MCU? But I think she, you know, the actress they have is um, is is I think going to portray that you know young kind of wide eyed superhero fairly well. And I think that there's going to be. A lot of people are like, we're going to want to see that come in and interact with some of the the standard, you know, MCU characters. I, the bigger question for the MCU is just when are we getting the MCU <laughs> with all the shutdowns and you know more and more actors leaving? Uh, I, I don't know when when that's actually going to get back up and going again. So I, I you know, it, but yeah, they, they would like her to be the new Spider Man. I, I don't know Listen, if it'll be successful, but they'd like it. Save me if you're watching. I got a three pronged plan. Just let her do hero stuff and, and save the day. Fail every once in a while. Learn from her mistakes and maybe listen to Spider-Man instead of lead him. Number two, stay away from the social commentary for the most part. Obviously, there needs to be a message here and there, but she doesn't need to be uh, front and center on every single uh, thing that's in the news. And number three, 
Peach Momoko should be on the interior art if you want the comic book to sell. With yes, a good writer. Absolutely. Um, no, I, I mean, Spider-Man failed a lot. It, it, I mean, he, he succeeded, he failed. That was part of the charm of the character. And and you have to do the same things here. You, you have to let, uh, you, you got to let the, the character succeed and struggle and fail and pick themselves back up again. That's how you, you, you get the love for the character. They have to do that here. No more secret prisons, that's all I'm saying. No, no secret prisons. No, no, just, just let her be a kid in a lot of cases. She's a kid superhero. Let her, let her be a kid. Let her, you know, get in over her head from time to time. That's, that's what's fun. That's what people like. Absolutely. If you want her to be associated with Spider-Man, she, you don't try to make her bigger than Spider-Man immediately. Right. Let the fans decide. But that's absolutely right. So this last one, I don't know if this is so much news, but this is just something I noticed. Obviously, recently, uh, Chadwick Boseman passed away. It's heartbreaking. You know, obviously, he was the, the actor that portrayed T'Challa, Black Panther in the MCU. A uh, very young age. You know, I believe he's, he's essentially our age. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, th there's a an outpouring of, of uh, grief, grief and, and loss over, over, the, over his untimely death. But he has gotten a lot of publicity or spotlight within in Marvel Comics. And I thought it was really strange. You know, Stan Lee has probably done more for the industry than, you know, he's on the Mount Rushmore. But this is the tribute he got in, in Marvel Comics. Then I see the tribute Chadwick Boseman got. And I'm not saying Chadwick Boseman didn't deserve a tribute, but it, it feels odd when I say when I see this. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel the same way as you. I, I think um, his passing was a surprise, and, and we didn't know. And obviously, I think he, he hid his illness. And I think that that is also part of uh, what went on there. And it's it's very sad that he's dying. And, and you take nothing away from that. I, I always look at this, though, and or when this, this stuff came, come, came out, there's a lot of really kind of legendary comic creators who have passed uh, in the last couple of years who are not getting anywhere near this recognition. And I don't think it's a contest like, you know, when people die, who can get the most, you know, hype and press about it. But I, I think that there's a lot of really kind of great people that have worked with Marvel in the past that deserve a higher profile. And um, it, it's maybe it's, it's less that you take away what they're doing for Bozeman and more that it's, it's a, it's a reminder that other people they could have. do more for other people as well. Yeah. That they could do more. I think that's well said. I, I, uh, you know, it, it is it, it, touching on death and these kinds of things is always tough and it's, it's sad and it's tricky. Uh, but it is, it is one of those cases where when you, when you do it one way for one person and then you neglect others, it, it, you don't, you may not be meaning to send a message, but you do. And I, I just, I would, I guess I'll put it, I, you know, it's very sad that Chaz Bozeman died. I hope that um, we can pay better tribute to, other people who have done, you know, a lot directly for comics. Uh, Chadwick Boseman did a lot for the character and for Black Panther. There's some people who did a lot for comics that I would like to see get at least this level of recognition, not more. Yeah, yeah. if this is the standard moving forward, you know, give a tribute, have someone that, that he meant something to, or, you know, write a write a foreword about what they meant to them, you know, use a nice quote in there, then I'll be happy. But if this is like a one and done, it does feel strange. It does, and I, I mean, this is my own probably personal thing I, I uh, uh, I've heard at least and I don't think I think this was scrapped but it, when they're doing uh, variant covers that are tributes I, I think that's pretty sleazy personally I, I don't think that's a good tribute I think that becomes a you know a money-making grab and um, I'm glad that plan was scrapped um, it needs to stay that way I, I think that you know you do tributes for people you don't try and cash in on them at the same time and and um, it's just me. It's just me. Different people, different different tastes. It's it's. I'm with you. I had the same feel. I had the same uh, response when I like when I saw the Spawn cover. Yeah, yeah. I I didn't. Um, I, I thought the Spawn cover was uh, well. Again, anybody can do what they want. It's their comic. Mm -hmm. They can certainly do what they want. But it's uh, uh, a lot of great people have passed on, and you know, need to remember those two. Absolutely. So that will basically do it for today's uh, Marvel Comics news. A new future. We'll see what how the strategy works with Immortal Hulk after Immortal Hulk 50 in the series ends. They're going to have new creative teams on one shot. Young Guns is no more. We've got the Stormbreakers, where essentially they're not going out and finding the newest up and coming artists. They are spotlighting the artists that are already premiering and on big titles. Hopefully, they can be permanent fixtures on some of those um, A list characters in the Marvel 
comics universe. Looks like Miss Marvel has been earmarked for for bigger and bigger, bigger and better things than not only Marvel Comics, Marvel Studios, Marvel video games, and uh, we you know we covered this here at the end. Thank you so much for visiting me, Perch, today. I love talking comics with you. Hopefully, we'll have you back here at least once or twice more this week. Is there anything else you need to say before we wrap this up? No, just thanks for having me on. Always, always happy to contribute. Absolutely, and there is a link to Perch's YouTube channel in the video description, and there should be an icon on the channel that says "Comments by Perch." You can select that and go. Uh, Subscribe to this channel that way as well, and I'll see you all later.